He's in for plants like peace lilies and shamrocks. Have you ever wondered about the myths and legends of some of those plants? I certainly have. I've never seen a four-leaf clover. Is it a real thing? Lisa Briggs <laughs> from the Bruce Company is here. Welcome back. Now, my hobby is, like, collecting all those geeky stories. Well, good. <laughs> it's then called ethnobotany. It's a real thing. It is. Yes. Ethnobotany. It's mm. the, the study of how plants affect and are affected by their environments and their human counterparts. Oh, interesting. So, I, my favorite part of that is the folklore. I mean, there's all sorts of how plants are used medicinally, whatever, mm -hmm. but I like the folklore behind things. So, what, what's some of these folklore well, behind I some of these? Well, I thought we would share that would brought it to my mind was because it's so close to St. Patrick's Day, and if you've ever wondered why you feel compelled to run to the garden center and get a shamrock at this time of year, it's because the the sham the word shamrock is a Gaelic uh, der derivative of a Gaelic word for little clover, mm -hmm. and the legend is that Saint Patrick used the three leaf clover to explain the Holy Trinity when he was trying to um, bring the Christian religion to Ireland. Interesting. So where the four leaf thing come in? Well, the four leaf thing is just a lucky thing because it takes they say about ten thousand four leaf or three leaf clovers to find a four leaf clover. So it's super lucky. But as I said before, that is not the most leafed clover that's ever been found. Fifty six leaves wow. found in Japan is the current mm -hmm. uh, record. record holder. By the new by the new plant. It might have been. <laughs> Calla lily. Calla lilies are um, a plant associated it, it's kind of funny. Um, the the some some groups say that it's a symbol of purity mm -hmm. and chastity. Other groups say that it's a symbol of lust and sexuality, which Ooh, I thought well, was really funny. <laughs> front and center here, lust and sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We also have Easter coming up, mm -hmm. and so that's Easter lilies are, you, you know, they're at, at church all the time. They're associated with um, the Virgin Mary and the angel Gabriel, the shape of the, the flower said to be like oh. his horn. Oh, really? Yes. Crown of thorns is said that it, it has those spiky thorns, the the thorn, the crown that they put on Christ when he was nailed to the cross. My favorite story is a plant that I don't have with me right now. It's a tree, a small tree called the service berry. Super popular. It's native to the upper Midwest. And it's called the service berry because that's when it blooms is when the mountain passes are open in the Appalachians oh. and the itinerant preachers can go through and conduct Sunday services. We are so connected to our plants, aren't we? I know. I know. It's incredible. Yeah, that's also called shad blow, which is it also blooms when the shad are running, the fish. So plants that have different common names and you wonder what they are, a lot of those are rooted mm. in some kind of folklore or story. Is a peace lily a variety of lily or is that... A peace lily is an arum. It's more... It's it's more um, related to the calla lily than it is to a, what we think of as a, an Easter lily or the ones that you get in fancy bouquets little, or they grow in our gardens. A little more lusty than religious. <laughs> yeah. Lisa? Imagine if you were like a Catholic in Rome back in the day. <laughs> no calla lilies, no, yes, all right. Very interesting, <laughs> lots of fun ladies. Very interesting, yeah. We're right back to the final check of your forecast.